Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's a final example of how to deal with capacitors. So this is a kind of a special case. Here we have what we call a cylindrical capacitor, and there are of course different types. In the real world, cylindrical capacitors sometimes are like little uh, flat capacitors that have been rolled up into little rolls and uh, isolated from one another by maybe a dielectric. Uh, but in this particular case, we're showing a very different kind of cylindrical capacitor where the inner plate is kind of a inner cylinder and the outer plate is an outer cylinder. So imagine an inner and an outer cylinder with a gap in between, charge placed on the inner cylinder, and the question is, what is the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor like that? And just to help us along, I wrote down the equation of the potential difference caused by such a device, uh, a cylindrical capacitor with another shell around it, um, and the voltage between the two regions is defined by this. This was something that we did in an earlier, um, an earlier chapter. And the uh, radius B would be the radius to the outer cylinder, radius A would be the radius to the inner cylinder, and you can see then that the natural log of a larger number divided by a small number is a positive value, so which would indicate that the potential V would be a positive value. That is a little bit misleading because if the positive charge is on the inside, then the potential would decrease as you go farther away, and going from uh, a to B, that would be a negative voltage change, and going from B to A would be positive voltage change, but here we're really only concerned about the potential difference, so maybe we can write it like this. The delta V, the potential difference between the two, can be defined like that. So how do we find the capacitance of such a capacitor? Again, also assuming that the charge on there is the linear charge density, so the uh, <coughs> so lambda would be in terms of charge per unit length, and so then the total charge on a segment of this capacitor, Q, can be defined as the charge per unit length times the length of that segment, if we then assume that L is a certain segment, and lambda just simply represents the charge per unit length. So we'll write that down, this is the charge per unit length. That makes it a little bit easier to grasp. Okay, knowing that, then how do we find the capacitance? Well, let's go back to our basic definition of capacitance that says that the capacitance is equal to the charge loaded onto the capacitor divided by the voltage across the capacitor. And that's no different for something that looks like this. So in this case, the charge that we have on a length segment L on the capacitor would then be equal to lambda times L. And we divide that by the voltage between the two plates, and that would be the voltage right here. So we write this as lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of Rb over Ra, which is simply the ratio of the outer radius to the inner radius. Then right away you see that you have a lambda in the numerator and a lambda in the denominator, so they would cancel each other out. When we divide by 1 over 2 pi epsilon sub naught, that moves into the numerator, so we can write this as L times 2 pi epsilon sub naught divided by the natural log of Rb over Ra, and written properly in the right order, you would write this as the capacitance is equal to 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the length divided by the natural log of the outer radius divided by the inner radius. And that is how you find the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor. So it's not so bad, as long as you have this formula handy. Of course, if you didn't have this handy, you'd have to figure this one out first. But at least this shows you how to apply that concept, knowing the potential difference between the inner and the outer cylinder. You can fairly easily find the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor using the definition of capacitance. And that's how you do that.